And I said, I, I'm an American. Well, I'm asking you, are you a Jap? I said, if my father was born in Japan, my mother is Japanese. I suppose that makes me one. We don't cut Jap hair. And I thought to myself, here I am in uniform. It should be obvious to him that I'm an American soldier, a captain at that, and that fellow very likely never went to war. And he's telling me we don't cut Jap hair. I was so tempted to strike him, but then I thought if I had done that, all the work that we had done would be for nil. When General Dacquas orders the depleted 442nd to rescue the troops, the men are shocked. Day after day, the Nisei unit is put on the front lines while Dacquas' other battalion lay dormant. Yeah. Then uh, General Dacquas came to my company about the lost battalion. Oh, we were all uh, tired and everything. We just pulled back for uh, for rest, you know. So that that order didn't sit too well with uh, us. You know the true heroes are the medics. So my friend called for medics, medics, medics. He comes running to my aid, in spite of all the artillery shells. They were running out of ammunition, so it was for us to rescue them. So we got up, it seemed like the middle of the night, but it must have been 10, 11 o'clock. 
and it was pitch, pitch black. You got to keep on going because if you stop, the guys behind you get all stuck, right? And then you get lost. We went up this way for some distance. Somebody who, who knew the trail was, was leading us. Looking up at the sky, you could barely see the sky. The trees are so dense. So now we come to the staging area, but <clears throat> the Germans know that. So what is it? First thing, as soon as we reach the staging area, they zero in on us. You see these shells coming closer and closer and closer to you. Then you get up and run like hell or dig like mad to, to protect yourself. At the low point, because I gave him the order to be a point man. You know. Resistance was tremendous. We were under heavy fire at, at times. I mean, I mean heavy fire. They were throwing everything at us. And the fourth day, we were pinned down by heavy fire in a machine gun, and uh, they were throwing grenades. And all of a sudden, the lines start to move. It's like a wave. From the side of my eyes, I saw a guy leading the charge. He just got up, and he just started to shoot. All hell is breaking loose, right? They're just shooting at you because this is the final stand by the Germans. They're up on the hill. We're coming up the hill. The guys were falling right and left around me. Now we're busier than the son of a gun. But nevertheless, they kept on going until they reached the top of the hill and this was the German. They're all over the place, dead Germans and Nisei's just covered that hill. I think that, that broke the back of the German uh, encirclement because the fifth day we finally broke through. They came running out of their holes and slapping our backs and hugging us back or this shell will shake our hands and say thank you very much, you know. Then I cried. Made me so happy. All Nisei 442nd Regimental Combat Team go on to become the most decorated unit in U.S. military history. General Dacquis orders a regimental review. When the regiment passes, the general turns to the 442nd's commander and says, I ordered the entire regiment to pass in review. The colonel replies with tears running down his cheeks, Sir, this is all that is left of the 442nd. You fought not only the enemy, but you fought prejudice, and you've won. Keep up that fight, and we'll continue to win. In fact, the funny thing, you know, even during war, it's human, you know, because I remember one motorcycle, a German motorcycle was going across this way and they had a machine gun backing him up, shooting against us. So I got the rifle, I all of us took aim, but I took a good aim. First time we missed, but I took a good aim and I can hear the motorcycle go, and it stopped. And then about oh, 50 minutes later, the, the German people uh, ran away and then this guy only left behind. 
So I was curious. I went across and I went. I saw his leg was stuck between the uh, motorcycle fork, you know, like this, and he was backwards, and his eyes was closed, but his head all shaved from the ground because the bicycle dragged on, you know, and he was dead. And then, so when I look at that, I said, "Gee, you know, he must have a parent." You, know, you cannot hit the guy. He, he must have brothers or sisters somehow. So I feel kind of painful. I felt bad that I was one of them that fired the rifle to kill the guy, you know. But uh, that's why a human being is strange sometimes, you know, even how much you hate that guy. But uh, when you sit down and think about it, see, they're human just like us, you know. They have feelings. They have loved ones, you know. So that's, that's why. When I look at that guy, I, I couldn't do anything because he's already dead, the motorcycle this way, and he's head all shaved down, you know, all on the ground, and he's just like that. That's why war is su such a, I don't know, so strange, you know, they're killing each other, but actually they, they don't want to really kill you, but you have to defend yourself, yeah? You sh you're the shoot what they shoot you, but it's strange, very strange feelings inside me.